Okay, it's going to be a review of Josh Barnett's Bloodsport Bushido. Uh, for this particular Bloodsport, uh, it was actually in Japan on pay per view. You had to buy it. It was twenty bucks. Uh, this was not part of uh, the GCW Collective like it was during WrestleMania weekend. But uh, hey, man, we're going to get right down to it. I, I thought the show was cool. I thought it was unique. I thought it felt different. Um, I wouldn't recommend this show if you don't like this style. But um, yeah, man, I thought the main event is definitely must see. There, there was some really, really good stuff, I think, on the second half of this show. But uh, let's get right down to it. The first match tonight, we have Fuminori Ebe uh, taking on you, Azuka. Um, okay, so with, with Fuminori, I really was assuming that him and... <sighs> Takuya Nomura, I thought they were going to main event the last Bloodsport show during WrestleMania weekend. If you if you looked at Wikipedia before Bloodsport 10, they were actually promoting that as the main event. But for whatever reason, they didn't go last and it was thrown onto the middle of the show. Uh, I thought that had like a lot of hype going into it. But coming out of it, there really wasn't a lot of hype. So Ebe takes on uh, yeah, kind of like a young up and comer. Uh, at this time, I, I thought he looked really good whenever he was able to show anything here. He hit a really, really nice suplex to really, you know, awoken the crowd. But, you know, the the more experienced dude, uh, Fuminori Ebe, uh, goes over in convincing fashion. It was cool while it lasted, but, you know, I would have loved to have seen more from Ebe uh, and Nomura, uh, definitely. But, um, you know, their matches were kept very, very short for this show. All right, next up we have Hideki Suzuku uh, taking on Hakuru uh, Saito. Uh, so Suzuki goes over in, in, in this first round right here. So this is actually part of a mini tournament. They have uh, two tournament matches, and then the winners are actually going to meet right before the main event. So Suzuki goes over. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen a lot of Suzuki. They, they were saying that he was, like, uh, working at the post office, uh, like in his late twenties, early thirties, and you know, someone needed someone that was tall and a sparring partner. And you know, once he started training, he just kind of fell in love with it. But uh, Suzuki goes over Sato uh, in about five minutes and thirteen seconds. Next up, we have uh, the next tournament match. We got Eric Eric Hammer actually taking on <sighs> Nomura. So with this particular match right here, uh, so if you haven't seen a Eric Hammer, he's an American dude who's about 44 years old. Uh, he's got a mustache very, very similar to uh, Dax Hardwood. Um, but he was good, man. He was good throughout this whole tournament. Really the most powerful dude, I would say, of the tur of, of the, the, the blood sports show, not the tournament. But, you know, um, Nomura actually hit him with some devastating kicks in the beginning, and he was just selling that throughout the rest of the show. But he actually wins by a um, you know power bomb by TKO. It looked pretty devastating. He 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 looked good. I mean he he's a big dude. He, he's carrying a lot of muscle, but he he's in good shape though. He was really impressive. I think throughout this whole show. Uh, all right, next up we have the uh, women's match. We got Konami uh, taking on Maya uh, Fakuda. Um, Really, really good stuff. I mean, they only go about six minutes, but I thought they packed in a lot of action. This felt like more pro wrestling than anything else on the show up to that point. Um, you know, Maya Fukuda, she was very, she looked very feminine, very attractive, but, you know, she was able to really do some really nice kicks out there. Uh, Konami, definitely the more experienced of the two. I think she actually had uh, experience uh, fighting in the UFC. So she goes over in convincing fashion. She actually celebrates with uh, Minoru Suzuki uh, after the match is over. All right, next up we have Davy Boy Smith Jr. taking on Mazukatsu Funaki. Um, hell of a matchup right here. It, kind of disappointing. I, I, I wish this got a little bit more time. And which Davy Boy, you know, acted a little bit more frustrated by the finish here. Uh, but man, I mean, who does this guy have the best genes in the history of wrestling? The British Bulldog marrying into the Hart family? You, you would assume Davy Davy Boy Smith Jr. has got to have some of the best genes ever. Uh, so he's taking out Funaki here. Funaki is obviously, uh, you know, a legend. He actually trained in the New Japan Dojo, like when Chris Benoit was there. But at this point, he's probably the oldest guy on the show, 55 years old, I think. But uh, he's still really, really good. I mean, I, I thought this was a unique combination. 
Um, obviously, he's got the age factor on Davy Boy, but Davy Boy is getting up there as well. I mean, the average age on this show is like maybe 46, 47. Like when you when you really think about it, maybe that's kind of stretching it. But I, I mean, the ending was pretty cool here. Davy Boy puts on the sharpshooter. Uh, Funaki, you know, catches it and puts him into a almost like an Achilles lock or a leg bar uh, to make Davy Boy tap out. So then we, the intermission was long as hell. I mean, it, it felt like the intermission was like a half hour. All right, next up we have Rampage. Rampage Jackson. Uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson uh, taking on Hideki Sakin. And I, I would I would actually say this, this was the worst thing of the night. Uh, I don't want to disrespect Rampage. Uh, I haven't seen any of his fights. I don't know if this is the first time he ever participated in wrestling he actually got on the mic after it was over and, and saying he would love to come back and entertain so you know i, I it, it came off to me like this is really like one of his first experiences you know wrestling uh but i mean he, he really just was trying to punch the whole time this was strictly about him just punching here there's really not much to say about it. sakin actually did look impressive towards the beginning of this thing but this dude actually came out in the mask and they were saying that initially he started wearing a mask because he was trying to do fighting mma and uh you know be a cop at the same time so that's why he you know started out you know wrestling in a mask but uh all right next up we have the return of Santino Morella. Santino Morella taking on uh, Kazusi Sakuraba. Um, so once again, another. You, you definitely had some good star power on this show. I mean, most of the stars here, you know, pretty much past their prime. But I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I thought this was really good. This was definitely one of the better things of the night. This is like at least three and a half for me. Um, Santino looked really um, different here. Like, he just looked humble. He looked serious. He looked nervous. But at the same time, like, he didn't any of the annoying shit that you saw, you know, throughout his WWE tenure, you know, totally out the drain. What, what was interesting here was, you know, if, if Sakuraba was actually mocking him with like the Cobra stuff. So that, that was really interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you just had, this was just pretty much, you saw some good grappling here from Santino. He, he, he was doing some really vicious chokes to Sakuraba. Uh, you know, eventually Sakuraba, I think he counted like a triangle choke and, he hit a double um, wrist lock uh, to make Santino tap out, but it was good, man. I thought they got time. It was competitive, and you know you could you could see you you could see the the skill that you missed from Santino in WWE. Um, you know you definitely got to see it here. All right, next up we have Minoru Suzuki actually taking on Timothy Thatcher. Um, I thought this was really good, man. So so Thatcher actually, you know, he actually beat Josh Barnett. Uh, last year at Bloodsport. Uh, so here he comes up short against uh, Suzuki. I mean, they, it was it was pretty good, man. I, I, I thought this was good. I thought the crowd was hot for it. Anytime they did any sort of wrestling, you know, the crowd was really, really into Minoru Suzuki here. And, you know, that, that was really, really intense with his facial expressions. And you could see the gaps in his teeth. He just, he just looked uh, vicious here, man. But there, there is actually a sequence here where Suzuki is actually going after the eyes to break up the submission. And then, uh, and then the referee tells him to stop. And then he starts going after the referee's eyes. So Suzuki kind of had some comedy going on here. Uh, the finish, finish comes when Suzuki actually hits the, you know, the spike pile driver out of nowhere and then thatcher's like selling the fact that he can't feel his arm and then the referee just you know calls for a stoppage tko but uh it was good man this this was definitely i i, I would definitely say the second best match of the night i thought it was i thought it was quality stuff okay next up we have the finals in the blood sport bushido tournament final so this is just a mini tournament this is probably the smallest tournament in the history of wrestling, uh, this is Hideki has, uh, Suzuki actually taking out Eric Hammer. Like I said, man, Hammer looked impressive here. You know, he hit some of the most vicious power bombs I've ever seen. I mean, they, they look vicious as hell. Uh, the problem was he's still selling like the the kicks from his previous match. You know, the, the guy that got him earlier on in the show. What was his name again? Uh, Namora, right? Yeah, Namora hit him with some vicious kicks in the in the beginning of the show. So th those kind of came into play on the last power bomb, and uh, Suzuki actually makes him tap out with a, you know, kind of a modified version of a, um, you know, calf crusher. So that's how that ends right there. So Hideki Suzuki is the uh, you know winner of the tournament. 
And on to the main event, we got John Moxley actually taking on Josh Barnett. Um, this is actually a rematch from, I think it was Bloodsport 3 from uh, 2021. Um, but yeah, th this was great. You know, Moxley is the IWGP champion. You know, the belt is, is definitely not on the line, but... You know, I would seriously uh, doubt that, uh, you know, Moxie was going to lose this match. So it, it's a little bit predictable, but, um, you know, I, I thought this was one of Moxie's best performances I've ever seen. If, if you notice, they, they show footage of him and, and Barnett wrestling from 2021. And, you know, just looking at some of the shots, he's he's in a lot better shape now. He's more muscular. He's more toned. And, uh, I, yeah, I mean, there's a reason he's champion right now. He's going to go up against, um, you know, NATO at Forbidden Door. So I'm, I'm, I'll am i be really curious to see if that does main event. I, I really don't know what the main event's going to be for Forbidden Door. But, um, you know, I, I mean, it, it's probably going to be Osprey and Swerve. But you never know. Usually the IWGP Championship main event's Forbidden Door, I, I think. Um, but, hey, back to this match right here. Um I thought it was good, man. I thought Josh Barnett looked a lot better here than he looked at uh, Bloodsport 9 against Timothy Thatcher. I, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't think he looked great in that match. He looked like he's definitely, you know, up to his game, up to his conditioning. He, he, he really treated this main event like it was huge. Uh, it, the, the main event, it felt like they emptied the tank. It was just a very satisfying match, especially for Moxley. I felt like he got the whole repertoire here. He got to see how good he was as a grappler, as a submission wrestler, as a counter wrestler. And then you got to see, you know, the the hard hitting action, especially when this thing got into overtime. I, I will say this though, if if you notice, Moxley actually uh, blades here, and <laughs> you actually see him go underneath the ring uh, to blade. And I was trying to think, it, this has got to be the most blatant and obvious like dig and twist I think I've ever seen. But I was thinking about it. You know, this is a no nonsense promotion. You know, you, you can't go by the Spanish announce table. You can't fight into the crowd. Uh, you know, like a match like Angle versus Austin from SummerSlam 2001. You know, th that match was probably so easy to find a, a, a spot where you could just blade. You know, you could hide under the announce table. Like here, this that's really the only way to do it. So I, I don't blame Moxie for doing it. But man, he juiced hard. I got to say, this is one of the worst blade jobs I think Moxie's ever done. It, it felt like the blood got worse as the match progressed. I mean, it wasn't any bad, but it was pretty close, though, man. It was it was a lot of blood, and but hey, you know, if there's any if there's anybody that's experienced with it, it's it's definitely Moxley, uh, it, and it worked out well. Like he cut a really really good promo after the show was over. This is one of Moxie's best best promos ever. Like, he just really put over how this is what he loves about wrestling. This is no bullshit. He loves this promotion. He loves the sport of professional wrestling. It, it, it did come off great. I'm trying to think of where the ending comes from. So, um, yeah, I, I got to say, Barnett looked good, though. He he delivered some really, really vicious suplexes. I mean, he just looks strong out there. He looks tall. He looks strong. He really looks like he could be Brock's brother. Like, they, they really do look like they could be brothers. But, um, yeah, I mean, Barnett. I, I I was just really impressed with the wrestling side of it, you know. I just, and, oh yeah, I, I'm almost forgetting, man. Like one of the one of the best spots of the match. So they you, so there's no ropes, you know. Most people know that by now, but if you haven't watched Bloodsport yet, you have no ropes, uh, but you still have the turnbuckle posts out there, and it was it was cool because you know, Moxie was trying to protect his fingers with the little holes on the. Uh, you know the ring post he was trying to just hide his fingers in there so that was pretty cool but then eventually uh josh actually countered like a triangle choke into the king of swing that big swing that claudio does and uh th that's how moxie got busted open you know supposedly but um yeah i thought that was really really cool and then uh you know the the the, the overtime you know moxie just hit him with a running knee and it was just relentless he just kind of stomped on him and just was you know hitting him with elbows and forearms until the referee you know stopped the match so it, it was good though it was very satisfying it felt competitive if i mean it was it was really really something to see i i don't know if this was better than their previous match the previous match looks pretty damn fucking good as well but th this this was this was awesome the main event is awesome and um yeah i mean i i think the show was quality it was it was a quality show i i think the the to me the japanese environment 
I think it actually works, um, you know, better for Bloodsport. I, I really, I, I enjoy this show a lot more than the show from Los Angeles, from Bloodsport 9. Um, there, was, there was a Bloodsport, I think from Atlantic City, I think it was Bloodsport 4. That was phenomenal as well. Whoever Jonathan Gresham fought on that show, like th- that's that's the first blood sport match that really, you know, blew me away. But but other than other than that, I think I think this Barnett you know Moxley match uh, you know was pretty damn good. Well, I'm trying to think, you know, Moxley had a really good a really good main event against um, was it Thatcher at Bloodsport Seven? I think man. So you know, Mo- Mo- Moxley's got to be the MVP of Bloodsport. He's he he's just had some wars, and uh, yeah, this will be definitely be another one. So that's pretty much it, guys. Looking forward to Forbidden Door, um, and I'll just end it right there. Bloodsport, Bushido from Japan. Definitely check it out if you haven't yet. All right.